I would imagine that most of us remember the week last March when our world changed. What we now call COVID-19 was spreading around the globe, changing all of our lives. We didn't really understand it at the time. And yet almost a year later, there are lots of questions that remain. Recently, the World Health Organization sent a team of scientists to Wuhan, China, to try and learn more about the virus and its origins. Peter Ben Embarek led that mission. And joining me now is Peter Ben Embarek. Nice to see you, Mr. Ben Embarek. Good morning. Nice to see you. So the WHO, if I understand correctly, plans to release uh, a summary report of the mission's finding as early as this week. I know a full report will come later. What what will be the key finding that the world didn't already know? Um, it will have uh, more details about uh, all the findings we made uh, during the four weeks we were in Wuhan. And that's centered around the uh, the situation in December 2019, where we now have much better understanding of what happened. We know that there was much wider um, uh, transmission of the virus in Wuhan during the at least the second half of December 2019. We also got uh, more details about the role of the markets and uh, have been able to trace the suppliers of uh, wild animal products to that market. And, uh, we also got a fairly good indication that there was no widespread uh, uh, transmission of the virus before December uh, 2019. But of course, we cannot exclude that uh, there could have been some sporadic cases here and there. Okay, that, that, that's that's interesting. Uh, so if, if the, the outbreak was much wider in Wuhan in December 2019 than previously thought, what was it? Was it a lack of information that prevented the rest of the world from knowing that? How do you, what do you understand about why we didn't understand that before now? Um, I think it's, it's not so much about, uh, about lack of uh, information. Uh, in December, uh, nobody knew more than uh, <clears throat> we, we knew back in a, a month after, in fact. Uh, it was still very few cases uh, that were detected and that started the interest uh, and the investigation into uh, what was this new disease. And remember, at that time, we didn't know about uh, all the mild cases, the symptomatic cases. Um, so uh, the, the only cases we, we could detect at that time were the severe cases with the severe pneumonia. So it was more uh, about uh, understanding that there was a lot of undetected uh, uh, cases uh, uh, in Wuhan uh, than we, we, we knew about. We have been able through uh, retrospective studies to find 174 confirmed cases in December, but probably these were all severe cases. So around this, uh, there must have been some uh, uh, many more uh, mild cases. There, there was obviously at the beginning of this uh, some uh, thoughts, some reporting that it had it had come from a laboratory, a Chinese laboratory. The virus had come from there. Were you able to to rule that out? Is that no longer even a hypothesis for the WHO? Uh, it is one of the hypotheses we looked at when we were there and uh, discussed with our uh, Chinese uh, colleagues. Uh, we also visited all the. Uh, relevant laboratories in the city uh, to have their views and uh, and their uh, understanding of uh, of uh, of what could have uh, uh, happened at that time, and um, they had exactly the same reaction as everybody else. Uh, they said, "Oh, uh, is this coming from our laboratory?" Uh, because they knew they were working with coronaviruses. They knew that uh, they were in the same city, so they had precisely the same. Uh, uh, reaction as as we all thought back in January and say, oh, it must be the lab, it's uh, next door, mm -hmm. uh, which is of course a natural reaction. But uh, there is still today no uh, indication that uh, uh, these labs uh, would have played a role in the start of the outbreak. So, but so it's the still a hypothesis, yeah. and it's still something that uh, could uh, could be further explored. So, but the most likely hypothesis still is that it came from the wet market. Is that correct? Uh, whether it came from that market or another market uh, is still uh, still uh, unknown. Uh, it could also, and, and how it entered the market is still unknown. Is it through uh, live animals, through animal products? Is it through uh, uh, humans uh, who are infected elsewhere and brought it to the markets? All this is still uh, still work in progress. 
What, what do you say to uh, those uh, critics, and there are many of them, who, who believe that the WHO was too willing to accept information from China early on, uh, and, and particularly around the insistence that there was no human-to-human -human transmission? Um, uh, I, I think uh, we have discussed that already uh, on many occasions. I don't think this time we didn't look at all uh, into the response to the outbreak. We didn't look at all at what uh, was done in January and beyond. Uh, we were focusing really on what happened before, uh, how did all uh, this started. So we're focusing on, on December 19, we're focusing on uh, the time before 19, trying to, to look at uh, clues uh, for uh, where it came from. So we were not this time uh, uh, focusing at all on the response to the, okay. to the even the early response to the event. Given given the way some of this unfolded, and, and particularly the former president's you know harsh criticism of the WHO, although there have been others, do you think that the, that the world is going to uh, buy into your report? Frankly, that, that the credibility of your report and what you've found on the origins of this virus is going to be uh, believed. I uh, I hope so, and uh, I I believe so because there is so much. Uh, new information in it, there is so much new science uh, and result of studies uh, in it that uh, uh, I think people will appreciate uh, this new knowledge. It's, uh, it's also, I think, important to, um, uh, for people to understand what this mission was and what it was not. Mm -hmm. It was not an investigation into any wrongdoing or any uh, uh, way how the system in China uh, operated uh, around the start of this event. This was a joint uh, study between uh, Chinese counterparts and international counterparts into trying to uh, develop and conduct uh, studies uh, that would help us get a better understanding of what happened. And that's what we did. So obviously, you know, you're trying to understand what happened so that we can better protect ourselves a hundred years from now. Hopefully it'll be that long before we experience this again. But is there any yeah. lesson that you have already gleaned from what you've learned about about how we should be reacting to these kinds of viruses or better understanding them? Uh, absolutely. And we clearly have to invest much more in uh, um, uh, understanding how these viruses are emerging, how this jump from uh, their reservoir into different animal species and human species. We also have to improve our surveillance of these mm -hmm. emerging diseases so we pick them up before they jump uh, into humans. And we have, when they emerge, like last year, we should uh, um, uh, wait too long uh, before starting to look at the origin of these viruses. This should be a line of work that goes in parallel with the initial response in terms of treatment, identification of cases, etc. We should also immediately uh, um, look at the origin of these events and not wait uh, uh, until later. And, and, and I said that was the last one, but one more. When you see the, the, the virus mutate as it is now with these various uh, variants of concern, how concerned are you that we are dealing with those properly in the world? I think we are, we are dealing with them with, the, with a lot of concern and attention, and we are increasingly able to detect them. Um, then the big question is, uh, are we good enough at uh, handling them? Uh, are we... Um, uh, or are we handling them as the, the first one, as the original yes. one, uh, yeah. and, uh, and taking the same strategy to control them? Uh, and then maybe we should have more discussions and, uh, and thoughts about, uh, is, should we apply the same strategy? Should we uh, try to deal with these variants the same way we deal with the original one uh, in parallel? Or, uh, uh, or what? It's, uh, it's, it, I think it's a big question, and um, yeah. nobody has the answers, uh, unfortunately. Okay, Dr. Peter Benambarak, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you.